Welcome to Straightforward. Thank you. We live in time of crisis. Uh, uh, we have a, we just passed the corona. Hopefully, we are we have rising energy prices. We have inflation, and the SME environment in Europe are, are facing these crises as well. So, what would you suggest would be the biggest challenge for you right now? Well. Uh Even the question itself uh, is massive since, uh, well, colleague, colleagues and I as an entrepreneur, we've been going through, uh, through challenges to another and uh, maybe the biggest challenge currently is the uncertainty, the uh, world that nobody knows where we are going and what will happen next. But isn't uncertainty uh, kind of... Uh Uh, th- a thing to live with as an entrepreneur as such. Yeah, the, uh, of course, that's the nature of entrepreneurship, uh, not knowing uh, exactly what will happen and taking the risk. But uh, uh, I think that we have been a bit uh, over-exaggerating the risks and the uncertainty <laughs> during the last few years. And uh, since um, these are times when the normal rules uh, concerning the market uh, behavior, for example, don't apply. And uh, also the freedom to uh, run your company has been jeopardized uh, uh, during the COVID, for example, because of the uh, regulation and uh, restrictions. And that, of course, makes the world entirely, entirely different for entrepreneurs. When you look at the, us as politicians, you can't find a politician who will not support an SME. We always talk about supporting the, supporting your your guys, but uh, what is the difference between the uh, so to say normal support and the, and the, the support that you need right now? Well, I, I think that uh, at its core, there's no difference. Uh, if the politicians would uh, think small businesses first when making decisions uh, it would apply uh, and be needed uh, in any kind of uh, surrounding or any kind of times uh, around us but currently of course uh, the uh, lack of predictability is something uh, that uh, that's affecting quite heavily uh, that's also uh, making mental load uh, for entrepreneurs uh, And that might be something that politicians could ease up and uh, when when making decisions. For example, the energy prices currently is one uh, topic that's uh, cons- uh, causing concerns. Uh, not knowing what the energy will cost in next few weeks, ne- next few months. We are talking about uh heavy intervention in the markets, so to speak. So that seems to me that you are very far from the idea of the market regulating themselves in, in this very particular moment. Yeah, and that's, uh, let's say, uh, the market itself hasn't been functioning uh, since uh, the, uh, uh, the war that Russia started in Ukraine. And uh, that uh, that is not the kind of free free market or well-functioning market at the energy uh, uh, market that we have been seeing. So what I'm trying to get to here is that are we looking at the end of the market as we know it? I think that we are entering to market uh, economy 2.0 in in a way uh, that's not uh, run by the strongest ones, the biggest ones, uh, and hopefully Uh, we will enter into an era where the smaller uh, players also have the ability to be profitable, to to compete. Uh, so that would be my uh, entrepreneurial and optimistic uh, view for the future. So now we hear uh, the the head of the SMEs talking about the market 2.0. That's that's kind of a <laughs> that's kind of a thing, I guess. That that sounds pretty new to me. Well, uh, I'm a firm believer of uh, free freedom of entrepreneurship. Uh, I'm a firm believer of uh, free market, uh, but uh, 
we need to realize the uh, environment that we are currently living in and uh, there actually hasn't been such thing as complete uh, freedom before these crises that we have been experiencing for the, uh, during the last few years uh, and and therefore well uh, US uh, decision makers and politicians know that there has been always been uh, some sort of regulations or imbalance in market. Let's take a look at what's actually cooking right now when we're talking about initiatives to support you, to help you. Uh, we're looking at the Commission uh, relief package uh, at, the, at this moment. What would you suggest would be the main thing in this relief package? What do you see as the most important thing in this package? Well. The most important, uh, of course, is the idea to relieve the pain. But uh, actual uh, initiatives or, or actions, we currently know, for example, the late payment directive is uh, such that uh, would bene benefit uh, smaller companies. Since uh, there is a continuing imbalance uh, between uh, bigger companies and the smaller ones uh, in, in uh, payment uh, behavior, for example. Uh, so that could be one uh, quite good initiative. So what, what are we talking about here? I, I, as I understand, every fourth uh, SME would go bankruptcy, uh, uh, bankrupt uh, because of late payments. So what, what is the idea behind the, the new suggestions here in the proposal? The most important uh, idea behind the late payment uh, directive or get corrections to, to the problem is that uh, entrepreneurs uh, are or have been acting as a force to act as a bank for the for, for the bigger companies and uh, that of course uh, when we are discussing about a, a bunch of uh, people and bunch of entrepreneurs, uh, that don't that have living, limited resources at their disposal. Uh, it's quite unfair situation to to be in a position where you do the work, but you give the freedom or the the flexibility to someone else, uh, and uh, that uh, of course is the most most important. But we talk about late payments here. Will this do the trick? Is this what you need in order to survive? The problem has been there for for a long time, and then we need to ha uh, find some sort of solutions. Uh, of course, nobody knows for sure what will happen, but it uh, most definitely is a good step forward and uh, if we can have a uh, supervisory uh, uh, official for uh, to uh, follow and coordinate and to for uh, entrepreneurs to contact uh, when facing problems uh, with payments that that would be something that would uh, enable this problem to uh, hopefully disappear but uh, at least uh, be a bit smaller than it is currently. I would like to come back to the idea of uh, of politician wanting to help to help you, um, and of course, since you are, I mean, 99% of, of companies in Europe are SMEs, so it, it's, I guess it comes as no surprise that politicians want to help. But uh, at the same time, it seems to me that we have some 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 structural problems here. Uh, at least to define what is an SME in order to, 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 to help the right places. Would you agree on that? Well, uh, there might be a structural problems, but I don't see that being the core. Uh, I think it's just uh, the basic understanding. The world has changed during the last uh, three or four decades quite uh, heavily when it comes to business environment and the structure of businesses. Uh, at the age of industrialization, uh, there were, uh, it was natural that uh, uh, the most em 
the companies that employed the most were big uh, factories uh, and there were uh, big resources behind them. But uh, the development of digitalization and development of world and development of internationalization and everything has uh, lead to the point we are now that the companies are uh, more smaller and smaller. And uh, the understanding and the legisl uh, le legislative dis uh, 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 structures haven't maybe not been able to follow the development of the business structure. You are basically telling me that the commission and the way the structure, the, 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 the legislative work is uh, lacking behind are too old-fashioned. Yeah, or then we can also think that uh, we've made regulations uh, during the, uh, throughout the years and we've been uh, piling up uh, the pieces of legislation to another and that's of course uh, when when you are running a company that that's run by you and owned by you and uh, you employ a few, few person, uh, you face all the ad administrative burden and regulations uh, as as a, uh, yourselves and, uh, and that's that's uh, that we have been uh, constructing and piling up regulation uh, on top of a. But basically what you are saying here, I guess the logic here would be that before we face these structural problems and do something eff efficiently about them, we will not solve the problem for SMEs. Yeah, I think uh, we need to prioritize what are the goals, what are the objectives that we want, want to achieve in the uh, becoming years and in the future uh, in ter terms of uh, business life in terms of a platform, business platform called called Europe and European Union. Uh, and uh, that also would require to uh, cut maybe or, or get, uh, reduce the uh, regulation that we have been building uh, prior. Mm. So, so less regulation or better regulation uh, would be some, some of the answers. Both. Both, actually. If you had the, the chance to build up a new system, an ideal system of, uh, of, of business regulation to support these 99% uh, of, of business in Europe, what would it look like? I think it would uh, start with the freedom to make ex uh, exp uh, experiments uh, as an entrepreneur, uh, not uh, since the one big problem of regulation is that we try to prevent uh, risks and or we try to prevent something from happening uh, and uh, we try, try to protect us ourselves uh, to be able to develop, to make something better uh, for ourselves, uh, to create change. and. Uh, the freedom of experiments uh, is, is something that I would entail. And then again, uh, I know uh, when discussing with uh, fellow entrepreneurs and uh, as an entrepreneur myself that uh, entrepreneurs care uh, heavily and care much about their workers. Uh, our, for example, working life uh, regulation is, uh, is actually lacking uh, heavily behind the, uh, the modern work life that we I'm seeing uh, among entrepreneurs. Uh, I think that we should rely more on what the employees and employers uh, self want, what the entrepreneurs and their teams want themselves and not try to predict or prevent something that, that that's not gonna going to be happen in, on beforehand with regulations. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to start all over and think about uh, uh, from the bottom up, I guess that's what you're saying. Uh, well, basically that and, and also and 
to be uh, clear, I'm not against totally against regulation. There, there's good regulation. There, there's a regulation that is needed in order to create uh, rules for the game that is that would be the same for everyone on a on a uh, playing field. But then again, too much rules make it impossible to play the game. Thank you very much for attending. <laughs>